Hello, my name is Eden Jean-Baptiste. I work for the engineering productivity team at Pinterest. Engineering productivity is a team responsible for making a developer platform that inspires developers to do their best work. We do that through providing a fast, safe, and delightful path from an idea to production without worrying about infrastructure. I specifically work on the build group of engineering productivity. Our charter is to release deployable artifacts. Today, we're going to talk about the past, present, and future of Bazel at Pinterest. We will start with how we got to where we are with Bazel, where we are with Bazel, the specific challenges faced along the way, and where we would like to go in the future. I want to start by talking about the landscape that got us thinking about the switch to Bazel. Pinterest's engineering productivity team manages all repositories at the company and are responsible for the success of all artifact builds. Currently, we have over 1,365 active repositories with an average of 20 repositories being created a month. By moving to a monorepo, we can reduce the maintenance burden of managing such a large number of repositories. Of those repositories, we have four high priority language-based monorepos. Each of these repos contain many hundreds of projects and will produce from one to over 100 build artifacts with each run of the build pipeline. Before Bazel, each of these was running a different build system. With Bazel, we can reduce the expertise needed by a build team to a single build system. Our Java and Python repositories are also producing a large number of mono artifacts. Mono artifacts are large executables that contain the code of multiple projects that are not necessarily related to each other. The maintenance of these artifacts are shared by multiple teams, making code migrations a large undertaking. Additionally, unused code is getting deployed to hosts and creating a security risk. With Bazel, we can produce much smaller artifacts easily. We're also dealing with a lot of repository interdependencies. The biggest challenge has been keeping our Apache Thrift service definitions in sync with our four language-based monorepos. When a new Thrift schema change comes in, we must generate new artifacts in each language. These artifacts are then incorporated into each repository. The feedback loop for finding out that there is a problem with an artifact generated from the Thrift schema change is long. Having all of our code in a single repository would help to reduce that time. So in summary, the four main reasons for our switch to a Bazel model repo are, one, the large number of small repositories we needed to manage. Moving to a model repo would allow us to reduce the maintenance burden. Two, the various different build systems we needed to have expertise in. Moving to Bazel reduces the number of technologies we need to learn. Three, the prevalence of mono artifacts making code isolation difficult. Moving to Bazel will allow us to produce smaller artifacts. And four, the large number of cross repo dependencies. This adds code synchronicity challenges. With a mono repo, the feedback loop for dependency changes is reduced. At the moment, we have fully migrated our Go and C repositories. Our Go repository is averaging 32 daily commits from 80 monthly contributors. And our C++ repository is averaging 16 daily commits from 60 monthly contributors. We've almost completely migrated our Java repository. This mixed repository is averaging 80 daily commits from 250 monthly contributors. It is one of our most active repositories and has been a challenge to migrate because of the amount of activity. We plan to start migrating our Python repository sometime next year. This repository is by far our most active with 250 daily commits from 500 monthly contributors. All of our repositories are currently running different versions of Bazel. So one of our next challenges will be keeping the Bazel version up to date and in sync on these repositories. Now I'd like to talk about the challenges we faced on the way to this point and the challenges we are still facing. I'll be focusing on challenges transitioning our Java repository because it is still in transition and was our most difficult to migrate to date. Our Java repository was by far our most active repo to migrate. We started this migration in September 2017, 
and we are about 90% done with this migration. This repository contains some of our most important projects at Pinterest, and with a lot of feature work happening on these projects, we could not get on the roadmap for every team to do an all-at-once migration. In order to accomplish this, we needed to migrate to Bazel in phases. In order to migrate in a phased way, we needed to be able to run two build systems at a time. We took advantage of Bazel's ability to coexist with Maven to accomplish this. As you can see here, we're able to keep our build files and POM files together. Since we could not get on the roadmap of a lot of teams to do this transition with them, we had to either do this transition for them or make it easier for them to do themselves. To that end, my coworker Arun Prasad created a script to automatically create build files and generate dependencies for a Java project. This script combined the best features of Buildifier, Buildozer, and unused depths into our script called Bazelize. This script can either generate build files for each Java package or one large top-level build file for all of the packages. Bazelize helped our users get up and running with Bazel, but most were not sure what to do from this point. When they needed to make a change, they needed to understand too much of the build infrastructure and Bazel. As I said before, some of Pinterest's most important projects are in our Java repository, and these contributors have little time to understand the intricacies of a build system. They needed a much simpler way to interact with our system. To simplify the boundary between repository contributor and repository maintainer, we created a developer contract. My colleague, Urvashi Reddy, is also giving a talk this year at BazelCon and will dive deeper into this topic. For now, I'll give a brief summary. We created custom Bazel rules and macros along with existing rules to define artifacts users would like to produce and where they would like to deploy those artifacts. For example, we have specific rules that allow you to create a Docker image that will be registered with either our Kubernetes deploy system or our virtual machine deploy system. Here, we are creating a container image and our custom container release rule can register this image with both our Kubernetes deploy system and our virtual machine deploy system called Teletrain. We are also able to create a Debian package that can be distributed to configured hosts through Puppet. In this example, we are packaging the code using the package dev rule. Our custom release rule will make this package available for distribution to hosts using Puppet. Lastly, we can package a data job that will be registered with our workflow system. The job is a simple deploy jar and our custom Hadoop release rule will make it available for consumption by the workflow system. We created a new build pipeline to support these new release rules. Here, you can see that when a new commit comes in, we will first calculate which files were changed, then figure out which rules need to be rerun based on the files changed. We will run the appropriate test rules for the changed files, and then we will do a test run of the re release rules before running our release rules. These release rules create the deployable artifacts and save them to the appropriate locations and notify the appropriate deployment systems of the availability of new artifacts. The simplification has made it easier for repo contributors to only be minimally concerned with the build architecture of their code. It also allows them to only need to know how to interact with the build system in one way. From their perspective, they only need to know what they want to do with their code. From our perspective, there was a lot of infrastructure involved in pulling this off. I advise you to go and watch Urvashi's talk to learn more about the implementation of this system and how we plan on integrating this in all four of our language-based mono repos. The repo contributors were used to a lot of isolation afforded to them through their Maven POM files. They were previously allowed to define their dependencies independent of what everyone else was doing. With a switch to Bazel, we decided to go to one workspace to simplify version conflicts and runtime errors. Unfortunately, with the phase approach came an unforeseen challenge. Those who migrated first were able to define the third-party dependencies used in the workspace. 
For most projects, this involved minor code changes to get it working with whatever version was in the repository, but for others, this meant large blockers for the project. We have allowed our users to create dependency version exceptions when they need to use a different version of a dependency due to a critical blocker. You can see here that the main repository version of Guava is 20.0 but a team needed to use an older version for a short time as they made changes to their infrastructure to support the newer version. So an exception was made for 16.0.1. We do recognize that this should be used with caution as it could lead to runtime conflicts in dependent code. Because of this, owners of dependent code work together with everyone in the dependency graph to use the same version, and these code exceptions are meant to be short-lived. One of the biggest requests we get from users is the ability to support provided dependencies. This was particularly requested by our Hadoop infrastructure team, where the jobs in the Java repo would be run on the platform where the Hadoop dependency would be provided. We do discourage our repo contributors from creating an environment where the code is built with one set of dependencies and run on a different set of dependencies. For this reason, we have not built in support for provided dependencies. However, because there are dependencies that may exist on the host that could collide with the dependencies in the jar, we have created a custom rule to create a shaded jar. In this example, we'll package all of these dependencies into the same jar. We will then rename all classes and subpackages under com.google.auto.common to start with com.pinterest.shaded.auto.common instead. If there is a collision on the host, this is a workaround that will help resolve the issue until the host environment can be corrected. One challenge we are still facing is upgrading third-party dependencies. Right now, when a user needs to use a newer version of a dependency or if security requires us to upgrade a dependency, the process is quite manual. We will need to create an exception for the new dependency, identify all targets that are using the old dependency, move projects in the same dependency graph to the new dependency, build the artifact, and test that the artifact is running properly in production. This process is extremely manual and requires a lot of coordination and puts our repository into a very fragile state until it is complete. For our next project, we'll be building a solution to make upgrading dependency versions simpler for ourselves and our users. I mentioned briefly before that we have a number of artifacts that are produced from our Java build pipeline, including Debian packages and Docker images. Right now, we have different solutions based on what type of artifact we are storing. Our container images are stored in ECR and our Debian packages are stored in Artifactory. In our Java repository, however, Switching from Maven as our build system meant we needed a way to produce jars that could be downloaded for use in other applications without storing them in the Maven Central repository. The use case where this is most prevalent is our Hadoop jobs. These jobs are produced without POM files and need to be stored in a place that can be retrieved by our workflow platform. To accomplish this, we are storing these artifacts in S3 with a custom versioning schema. As you can see here, artifacts produced by the Hadoop release rule are stored in a special S3 bucket under the commit SHA that generated it with a generated version number and the jar name. In the future, we would like to store most artifacts in a single place and we are looking into Artifactory as our storage solution to take advantage of their versioning features. Now I'd like to discuss where we hope to go in the future. We are only in the middle of our journey as we refine how we will use Bazel to help us manage our build and release infrastructure. We've learned a lot and have identified a lot of things we could be doing differently in the future. Our next big migration will be moving our Python monorepo to Bazel. This is by far our most active repository and we will want to have our migration strategy refined before we begin. First, we'll need to make sure we move faster with this migration to that end, we'll need to build in more tools for automatically migrating to the new build system, so it's a seamless experience for our contributors. We'll also look into the best ways for keeping our Python development and runtime environments hermetic. 
In addition to our Python migration, we want to experiment with multi-workspace configurations to give our users more flexibility and isolation with their third-party dependencies. They can own these dependency versions and resolve conflicts on their own. We also theorize that this will make our third-party dependency upgrades faster by upgrading smaller related code groups together. We will also be automating our Bazel version upgrades on our repositories. We'll be building in new automatic repository validation to ensure that version upgrades don't break our code or our pipelines. To keep our version up to date, we'll also be looking into incorporating Basilisk into our infrastructure. Lastly, we'll be working towards our end goal of moving to a single monorepo. We have already started moving our own team's internal code into a multi-language monorepo, and we will be expanding this to other teams as we nail down our repository configuration strategy. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to listen to my presentation, and I'd also like to thank all the BasilCon organizers for putting this on. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Pinterest. Thank you. Thank you.